well friends today we will be talking about an approach to upper gi hemorrhage this is a very important topic from the point of view of uh, <coughs> the kind of uh, patients that we have in emergency more importantly a lot of changes have happened in the context of management of upper gi hemorrhage that's why this topic needs to be revisited from that perspective now as we mentioned then what are the indications of surgery as i mentioned indications of surgery may be uh, written here as uh, six of them but these would happen quite rarely in the context of uh, our current day practice let's see hemodynamic instability despite vigorous resuscitation and six units given patient is not stable so that's a patient who is not stable uh, despite giving blood transfusion he remains unstable and that's uh, you know where we have to uh, sort of offer other modalities than endoscopic uh, modalities and here a trans arterial embolization or surgery would be the options failure of endoscopy and failure of endoscopic techniques which we have already mentioned shock assisted with recurrent hemorrhage you know initially we have controlled and then the patient is having recurrent massive hemorrhages again that will be a case where surgery may need to be done a recurrent hemorrhage after two attempts at endoscopic hemostasis you have done one endoscopic maneuver you have done a second endoscopic maneuver controlled initially but re uh, bleed happens then again you will have to consider this patient for surgery and continued slow bleeding for uh, with a transfusion requirement exceeding 3 units the patient is becoming stable but is not completely under control had this will be an iffy kind of uh, indication in the context of uh, upper gi hemorrhage and chronic gastric ulcer where we cannot confidently rule out malignancy would be one more um, indication to this list but suffice it to say that the list may the list may include six indications but these happens in today's context very sparingly and that's good because uh, uh, outcomes are improving not because of surgical interventions but because of the endoscopic intervention and because of the uh, because of the interventional radiology interventions so these are the things which have changed so if i were to write it very pointedly that is says that surgery is on its way out as far as upper gi hemorrhage is concerned and i to give you a context to it that of the 100 patients that you'd see probably five patients may actually end up in surgery and it carries prohibitive mortality so that's the kind of thing that you have to understand that though of course as a surgeon we must know what are the options but we must also know the context in which we are talking now surgical management has said that 10% of the bleeding there is an ulcer will come into this category and uh, this uh, uh, these ulcers will have these characteristics the ulcer is larger than 2 cm it is a posterior duodenal ulcer and a gastric ulcer generally have a higher risk of bleeding if they are present so uh, that this kind of situation where we may have to offer surgery may pertain in about 10% of the patients now now what surgery to be done i think this area has also gone tremendous change and this change has been done by ppi and h pylori eradication paradigm so though so many surgeries are described but we have come to this conclusion that aim of surgery is simply to control bleeding simply control bleeding by underrunning the bleeding vessels or by underrunning the tear that's all we need to do unless there is an associated structural uh, change that has taken place so uh, if i have a bleeding duodenal ulcer i'll open the duodenum see where the bleeding is present put my strategically planned stitches which i'll tell you how we plan and control the bleeding and simply close the pylorus 
not even do pyloroplasty or may end up doing a pyloroplasty uh, if we find that uh, you know closure is uh, cause, going to cause some degree of narrowing to the gastric outlet. We are not going to bother about doing vagotomy because PPIs are so effective that there is now considered to be no need for doing any acid reducing procedure whether it is adding a gastrectomy is concerned or whether it is doing a vagotomy is concerned. Basic refrain of surgery in these patients is to control the bleeding and that's the most important thing. When I come to a gastric ulcer, there too my aim would be simply to close, uh, to do a gastrotomy, see the bleeding point and take a biopsy and control the bleeding. And further, if biopsy, biopsy is very important as far as, as gastric ulcer are concerned and this biopsies will help us zero down on a possible malignancy and offer the treatment accordingly. So the important point that I want to mention here is the changing role and changing scope of surgery in patients of bleeding, duodenal ulcer and gastric ulcer. And, uh, and that's uh, something, you know, which we have to all be all clear about. Now, controlling the hemorrhage, we have to understand that in the context of uh, duodenal ulcer, we have the bleeding happening from gastroduodenal artery. And we uh, this is the point from where the bleeding is taking place. So we have to control the flow from the gastroduodenal artery, from the transverse pancreatic artery, and from the artery as it's divided into giving right gastroepiploic and uh, superior pancreatic branch. So that's uh, by doing strategically placed stitch, either we take a U stitch like this or take three stitches and control the bleeding from the gastroduodenal artery. So a stitch is uh, placed which may be, uh, uh, <coughs> you, uh, we, we can use uh, a non-absorbable uh, silk or we may use a PDS to uh, achieve a good um, ligation or good transfixation of the bleeding uh, of the vessel around here and that is gastroduodenal uh, vessel and then a medially placed suture to control the bleeding happening from the transverse uh, <coughs> pancreatic uh, flow and the one inferiorly. In this way, we will be able to control the bleeding and bleeding while taking the stitches, very important to make sure that our stitch is not deep enough to cause uh, any impingement on the CBD. So uh, this is the key to controlling bleeding from the duodenal ulcer, putting a stitch superiorly from the bleeding point, a stitch inferiorly to the bleeding point and stitch medially uh, to the bleeding point. So these three important points are to be addressed. Once this is done, bleeding is controlled and that is the basic purpose of doing any surgery in the context of duodenal ulcer, uh, in the context of bleeding 